All right, Richie Jacobs asks, I was watching a YouTube channel called Verily I Say. He states that in Romans 10.9 where it says, Thou shalt be saved. Let's go to that real fast. Romans 10, verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Um, in the context, this is not a... This is not speaking a, in the future, it's talking about right now. Okay. That shouldn't even be in question. Now, the question, of course, is... Uh, this idea, are we going to be saved from the wrath of God? Yes, we are going to be saved from the wrath of God. We're going to be lifted up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air when Jesus comes in the clouds. And we are saved from the destruction that's coming upon the earth. So in that sense, we are saved at that time. But we're saved at that time because we're saved right now. It's ever, it's eternal, it's everlasting. We're saved forever. Once saved, always saved. And uh, let's go real quickly. Let me see which are saved. Let me see if this is the right verse here. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. There's no way to wiggle around this. Alright, so, yeah, we're, we're, we will be saved in the future. Yes. But when we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are saved right now, forever. We are sealed unto the day of redemption. All right, so let me finish what he says here. He states that Romans 10, 9, where it says, Thou shalt be saved and thou art saved are two different things. In other words, shall means the future and will be saved someday if we keep working at it and keep repenting. <laughs> keep repenting. You're going to keep turning, keep changing your mind? No. No, no, no. No, don't keep turning. Don't keep changing your mind. Stay steadfast. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Right, stop repenting. After you've been born of God, you don't need to repent. You've already repented. You've already turned from unbelief to belief. Now, it's true when these people say it's wrong to sin. We should never sin. Whether we're saved or unsaved, it's always wrong to sin. So stop sinning. It's only going to bring torment. It's never going to bring peace. God loves us, does not want us to suffer. Therefore, therefore it's important that we ought not ever sin even though we do God knows we do and God knows we need a savior and we have a savior and it's Jesus Christ that's why we need a savior it is because we can't do it ourselves right so um, this idea that we have to keep working at it now let's I mean I've heard it's unbelievable really I've heard these people, first of all, they claim that once saved, always saved people are teaching that uh, it's okay to sin, it's okay to live your lifestyle any way you want, you know, you do what you want, you're saved, you can sin until your eyes turn red, right, just sin, 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 you're saved, it don't matter, that's ridiculous, alright, it's just absolutely ridiculous, and they want to that's how they want to define the argument. That people that believe once saved, always saved, believe that they can just go on sinning. 
and it's a just a complete lack of understanding of what it means to be born of the Spirit of God, to have the Spirit of God in you and working in you, being confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So it's not us that is doing the work. It is the Spirit of the Lord in us doing the work. Jesus says, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. So it's the Lord Jesus working in us. And it's not of ourselves. It is what God is doing for us in our lives. All right. So, I mean, and then, of course, what I want to talk about here is in Matthew 7. It's, this is incredible because you'll, you'll see people point to these, verse, these verses. And they'll say, well, this is talking about people that believe in faith only. All right. And it's nonsense. Well, it doesn't make any sense at all. They're just quoting the verse and not giving any detailed explanation for how it applies to people that believe in faith as as uh, you know the saving grace so let's read it not everyone that saith unto me Lord Lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven but he that doeth the will of my father which is in heaven meaning not everybody that says they're a Christian not everybody that says that Jesus is the Christ shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. And the will of the Father is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Now think about this. Is that a sin? Is that wrong? Are these people going out and just sinning willy-nilly? Sin, sin, sin. We believe once saved, always saved. So we're sinning, sinning, and winning, and winning. Right? That's not a sin to prophesy in the name of Jesus Christ. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? That's not sinning. That's not sinning willy-nilly. And in thy name have cast out devils. Again, that's not a sin. It's a good thing. Prophesying in thy name and casting out devils. These are good works. It's not sinning willy-nilly. And in thy name done many wonderful works. That's not a sin to do many wonderful works. None of these things. Prophesying in thy name. and In thy name casting out devils. And in thy name doing many wonderful works. These are not sins. We're not sinning willy-nilly. And then Jesus professes unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work in equity. Now, think about that. Prophesying in thy name, casting out devils in the name of Jesus, and doing many wonderful works in the name of Jesus. And Jesus is saying, ye that work in equity. Why? These are good works not bad works, not wicked works. But he's calling them uh, workers of inequity, basically, right? There's only one possible explanation for that. And that is, these people believe that they are going to be saved because they prophesy in the name of Jesus. Because they cast out devils in the name of Jesus. And because in the name of Jesus, they are doing many wonderful works. That's why they are workers of inequity. Because they are trusting in themselves and not in the Lord Jesus Christ who has done it all. Right? It's that simple. There's no other way to explain this. There's no other way to understand this. And of course, if you are not saved, you're not going to understand it, no matter how much you read it. All right, You have to first trust the Lord Jesus Christ. 
and thou shalt be saved. If you're trusting in your own works, you are as wicked as the most wicked man on earth. You really are. And so anyways, uh, I hope that sort of explains it, Richie. Uh, you'll see these people that reject the grace of God come and attack us from every possible angle. And Roderick, I'll get to your comment there. I appreciate those.